Catherine Mansfield and I became lovers. We wanted to marry, but her husband, whom she had left almost immediately after their marriage, delayed divorcing her for six years. Uh, the magazine Rhythm, which I had started while at Oxford, ran into financial difficulties, and Catherine undertook to pay off the magazine's debts to the printers out of her allowance from her father. But now, just before the war, in 1914, we came to know D.H. Lawrence and Frida. The four of us were, I thought, destined to become great friends. But Catherine mistrusted Lawrence, not lightly, but deeply. You may have enlisted, Mr. Murray, but there'll be no war for you, just yet. He's given me a chit. You're not? No. We're not married, and Boke is not going to the war. <laughs> oh, my darling. He says we're to go away on holiday. Doctor's orders give my chest a chance to clear. I said, did you think Buckinghamshire would do? He said, anywhere away from London. The cottage near the Lawrences. Why not? It's there. And we can all be medically unfit together. I hate this war. I know what it is, and I reject it. As far as I possibly can, I will live my life and be happy, if possible. Oh, the whole world slides down in horror into the bottomless pit. Hmm. <laughs> the highest virtue is to be happy, living in the greatest truth, not submitting to the falsehood of these personal ties. The real way of living is to answer one's wants. Well, that supposes one knows one's wants and who one is to want them. Well, I do, Jack, I do. But I will not, I refuse to know in the headway. Only by feeling and wanting will I know. Oh, Jack! That is no way to paint a door! Lawrence. Lawrence! It must be done! Done quickly! You're spilling everything! <laughs> there, that's how you paint a door! Oh, and the floor! Wait, wait, wait! wait. Apples! Beautiful <laughs> pea green apples! My paint! I climbed up. Smell October in them. Huh? I've finished your hat for you. Put it on. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, sorry. Oh, God, a God, a God. Oh, Jack, it's hopeless for me to do anything but that I have a woman at the back of me. I don't sit in the world without a woman behind me. Oh, a woman that I have keeps me in direct communion with the unknown. Ah, blood darkness. <laughs> You only scoff because you're not fully female, Catherine. Tosh, ask Bogey. <laughs> Christianity, as a myth, is important to me. Mm. Well, the Christian bond is conscious. Leave father, mother, brother, sisters, and follow me. It's a Passing, a proper passing on from the tables of the law to the Sermon on the Mount. But we carry the tables of the law within us wherever we go. Of course, but they're balanced. The unconscious by the conscious, they have to be. Mm. The 
does a living harmonage be found between them? No, 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 no. There's no such balance to be found. No, we go wrong in our minds. All I want is to answer my direct. You see, I can see man's body as a kind of flame, like a candle flame, forever upright and yet flowing, coming God knows how, out of practically nowhere, from being itself. Whatever there is around it, that it lights up. But the objects it illuminates are not important. The flame is. And we mustn't chase the mystery in the fugitive, half-lighted things around us. We must look at ourselves and say, my God, I am myself. Yes. Yes. I must escape, Johnny. I must. I can't do any work here. I can't bear this cottage. It's making me ill. And the roof leaks. Oh, your sister's getting so old, so old. At 27? <laughs> oh, Chummy. Oh, my darling brother. I feel ever so much older than Jack. He often talks to me as if I were an older woman. He's such a hero worshipper. He and Lawrence and all the others talking themselves into thin air. Jack's disappearing. There's no sense of his own identity at all. He can't even fry a sausage without thinking of God. <laughs> You're out of love with him? I don't know. I don't know, but I do know our three-year idyll is over. He doesn't even know if I'm more to him than a gratification. He told you that? Oh, not quite. I looked in his journal. It was there. Did he mind? <laughs> he was furious. <laughs> quite rightly. It was an unwritten law between us never to peep. But you did. I had to know what he was becoming. It was wrong of me, but at least I know now. Yes. I've got to breathe new air. I could lend you some money, Katie. Could you? No, you... Yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, enough to get you to Paris, so live there for a while. Oh, Chummy. Oh, you are a dog! It's the least her brother can do. I measure everybody by you. You're always here, always. I'll be able to write again. I know Paris will revive me. You're saying that flat your friend offered you? Shh, he's at the front. A novelist masquerading as a corporal. I'd be alone in the flat. I expect I'll pass through Paris when I finish training. We can have a wonderful dinner and you'll be a real par man, ordering everything. Yeah. What will Jack say? He'll have to understand just as best as he can. Well, I'll give it to you now, Katie. You've always done things straight on the line. How rich you are. Well, I've nothing to spend it on in the army. Oh, you want to listen to the female <laughs> Too male, too conscious, too knowing. Oh, you want to come out with this beach and money? Chummy's lending it me. What for? Oh, how censorious, because I need it, Jack. No, kettle on. That's not an answer. An intellectual woman, Jack, needs money as a substitute. Did you have a nice walk? Yes. Lawrence walked oh, very well. <sighs> He's been denouncing my father for me. He is why I have no sensuous nature, he says. Does he? You listen too hard to him. Oh, battle, Jack. She senses the bond beyond the personal that could exist between us. <laughs> and you still haven't said why you need the money. I'm going to Paris. Oh? I can't work here. It's crippling me physically and spiritually. I have to escape. I'm going to Francis Carco's flat in the Quai des Fleurs. I see. I suppose he made all the arrangements, those letters he's been writing. He's at the front. He's in love with me. And you? Are you? Hmm? Can't tell here. I see. You're so, so inert! She's right, you should. <laughs> Don't I know? Don't I know?
How absurd. It cannot be her. It never would have been. Sit down. Is it? Chocolate. It has turned cold, hasn't it? Monsieur? The English always begin a conversation with remarks about the weather. Have you noticed? Pardon, monsieur. Je ne parle pas anglais. No, no. It was she who couldn't... It was the other way around. J'ai une petite chambre, monsieur. Si vous we all have our little rooms, little wantings. And this is where I write. Jolly nice. My writing table is English. You must be very successful as a writer. Oh, shh. nothing is paid for. It is all, how do you say, uh, on tick? Already my first book, False Coins, is a succès d'estime. See, si. I inscribe it for my English friend. For Dick Harmon, with sincerest wishes, Raoul Duquette. I'm... thank you. And also, I am preparing my collection of poems. They are what I really care for. I will call them Left Umbrellas. They will create an immense sensation. Do you see my pictures? They are a little outré, but very fine. Don't you agree? Very interesting. <laughs> you English, you are superb. So calm, so cool. Laconic, I think, is the word. Ah. Dick, do you see her? I will tell you why I keep her, because you... Oh, but where is the whiskey we bought? Yeah. Excellent. We must broach it for the nightcap. Oh, several nightcaps. To seal our friendship. Yes. I keep that magnificent negress because... You won't be shocked. When I was ten years old, we had an African laundress. Cheers. She was very big and very dark. I was tiny for my age and pale, but with a very pretty child's mouth. Then one day, she caught me up in her arms and began kissing me. Oh, Dick, those kisses, especially the ones inside my ears, they nearly deafened me. After that, she gave me a little fried cake coated with sugar. Every week after that, it was repeated, and more. In fact, my childhood was, to put it prettily, kissed away. <laughs> and you know, it is a fact that since then, I have never made the first advances to a woman, to any woman. At first, I was surprised. Is the very distinguished young lady discussing the Kipling with the gentleman in the brown beard, rarely pressing my foot? I would press back and, yes, oh, yes, she was. Extraordinary. Huh. Curious, isn't it? I don't look <laughs> like a maiden's dream. Oh, I really don't like whiskey. But you insisted on buying it. To honor you, Dick, to honor you. Now you must tell me about you. This special study you're making on modern French literature is a tremendous idea. Oh, it's only a notion at the moment. We'll see. Whiskey's bad stuff to get drunk on, so I will, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not believe in the human soul. I never have. People are like suitcases. Uh, Packed with certain things, started going, or oh, thrown about. Yes, or oh, tossed away. Or oh, dumped down. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, lost and found, half emptied suddenly. Or oh, squeezed together, fatter than ever, possibly. Yes, yes, Dick, you are perfect. You understand. They are. Until finally, the ultimate porter 
swings them onto the ultimate train. Uh, yes, and away they rattle. Don't ask me why I have such a fancy for this little cafe. It is dirty, it is sad. Oh, yes, Dick, it is. Sad to its core. Observe the waiter. See how he stands. He is waiting to be photographed in connection with some wretched murder. And underneath the caption, interior of cafe where body was found. Don't you agree? Uh, perhaps his feet hurt him. No, no. He is waiting for his one moment in life. I'm afraid I have to go. Ah. At last, Dick. I see into your heart. She's very handsome. Not quite young. Oh, yes. That uh... is my mother. Oh, I am sorry. I did not mean to joke. Would you please pay for our copies? <laughs> It's much too much, Dick. It doesn't matter. I must go. I have to collect my bags from the hotel. Now? I am leaving for England. You're not serious. I am, perfectly. I must get back. I have some work to do that I cannot manage here. But why did you not tell me before? It is insulting just to get up and go. After all, going to England is not like crossing the boulevard. Well, it's not much further, really. Only a few hours. But why did you not tell me when we've been such friends? I don't care for... Seems. Oh, you thought I'd shout and flap my hands, huh? Well, you are rather, aren't you? Only because I... Oh, well, go. Go, since you wish it, but I consider myself insulted. You shouldn't, really. There's no need. All right, goodbye. Adieu. You're absurd, Raoul. Au revoir. Oh, I was just déjà entendu cela, mon gars. I'll be over again. Don't count on me to come running. I am not your little fox terrier to jump up and down with my tail wagging. <laughs> Stupendous when I received your letter. Staying in Paris indefinitely so good. Look, you got the rooms. Uh, yes, of course. The best I could find. But where is Madame? Oh, she's looking after our luggage. And she's not Madame. Oh, here she comes now. <laughs> now I understand. That is why you were so distraught just now, huh? Oh, Dick, how English of you to be embarrassed. Oh, she is a lovely, a perfect little mouse. How extraordinary. That's what I call her, mouse. I had such time with the porter. You wouldn't understand. Darling, this is Raoul Duquette, my Parisian friend. Oh, how do you do? Enchanté, mademoiselle. I... Je ne parle pas français. Oh, it does not matter one bit, because I speak English, you see. And besides, I'm sure you do, really. Of course she does. Yeah, couldn't we get a cab or a taxi or something? We don't want to stay in this cursed station all night, do we? And this, I thought, for Madame. I meet Mademoiselle, I'm so sorry. Uh, I think you'll find the linen is clean. Uh, the towels also. Your room, Dick, is not so large, uh, but I thought since you would both naturally be using this... Yes. And there's also a small dressing room here. Well, there we are. I know you won't be wanting me just now, so... No, you must stay, Raoul. Oughtn't I to help that chap with the boxes? All those stairs, after all. Yes, you ought. They're dreadfully heavy. Books, you know. Yes, right. I know these rooms are very high up, but I chose them because... No, no, unless you want to run the wrong. Uh, you are quiet here, yes? And uh, above the noise, you can be as quiet as a mouse, yes? Uh, that's your trunk, Dick. 
Well, you don't mind it standing here for present, do you? Just for a moment. I'd better pay this chap. He's got all the rest on the landing. But we can sort out which is whose. C'est tout, monsieur? Yes, yes, that's fine. Uh, merci. No. No. I'd like some tea. Tea for three. Tea. At once. Immediately. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, all right. Yes, that's a good idea. Uh, du thé pour toi, tout de suite. Du thé pour toi. I'm sorry, so thoughtless. You must be so tired, Mouse. I am exhausted, I admit it. Do sit down, Raoul. Uh, why don't you take off your cloak, Mouse? Uh, no, thanks. Not just now. What a pity it is you did not arrive by daylight. There is such a charming view from these two windows. Yes? So many absurd little boys on bicycles and people hanging out from windows and... Oh, well, you'll see for yourselves in the morning. Very amusing, very animated. I thought you said it was quiet. It is quiet too. Oh. Andre. Ah, tea, the lifesaver. You see. Is that I come, sir, madame? Yes. Uh, oui, oui. <sighs> milk and sugar. Uh, uh, no milk, thank you, and no sugar. Oh, but that's not tea. Oh, it is for me. Uh, that's for Dick. Uh, could you... Oh. Of course. Delighted. Thanks. The cup that cheers, but not intoxicates, yes? Inebriates. What? Oh, I say, do you mind posting a letter for me, old chap? I must get it off by tonight's post. Once I've written it, that is. It's to my mother. It won't take me long to write, but it simply must go as soon as... Uh, you don't mind? <laughs> I'll write it in... Uh... My room. Won't you drink your tea first, darling? Uh, my tea? Uh, I won't be long. I will be delighted to post it for you, old chap. Thanks. You must forgive me if I am impertinent, if I am too frank, but Dick has not tried to disguise it, has he? There is something the matter. Can I help? I'm afraid you can't help, thank you. I'm awfully sorry. It must be horrid for you. No, not at all. But you are suffering. This is what I cannot bear to see. Someone so exquisite. Suffering. Oh, it'll be all right. It can't go on like this. But of course it can't. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, don't mind me. Do smoke. Matches by the candlestick. Ah, yes. Yes, Dick is a strange man. Uh, he once insulted me without realizing it, I think. But his charm, I call it his English charm, is so amazing that I forgive him. Please, please. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Beside you, I'm the elephant, yes? He's been gone an awfully long time. Perhaps he writes a long letter to his mother. He showed me a photograph of her once. She seems a very powerful... This woman. is... He's been gone ages.
Mouse. My little mouse. It's no good. It's impossible. I can't see it through. <laughs> Did he... Oh, Derek! He is gone. Oh, uh, may I? Do what you like. It all seemed so positive when we talked and planned. But the very moment the train started, it was all over. I felt her drag me back to her calling. Extraordinary. It would kill her, and, oh God, I can't kill my mother. It is incredible. Can there be such mothers? Oh, yes. Yes. So you see, it's not incredible at all. I'm not to write to him. I am to forgive him. And on second thoughts, I am to love him. I knew all along, of course. I felt it all through me. On the train, on the boat on the train, but uh, I still went on hoping, as one so stupidly does, you know? As, as one does, of course, as one does. But tell me, what will you do now? Go back, see him? What an extraordinary idea. I shan't dream of seeing him. As for going back, that is quite out of the question. It is? Quite. I can't go back. But surely... No, it's impossible. For one thing, all my friends think I am married. <sighs> my poor little friend. Oh. I'm sorry. I always express my sympathy with a touch. Uh, I am sorry, but have you any money to stay with? Yes, I have 20 pounds here. I see, that is plenty. So, what are your plans? I have no plans. It's very late. You must go now, please. I am so sorry. I ask too many questions too quickly. Forgive me. Let me come tomorrow morning. You will let me look after you a little, hmm? Yes, you're very kind. Yes, do come tomorrow. I shall be glad. It makes things rather difficult because je ne parle pas français. Somehow, in the end, je ne parle pas anglais. Vous n'avez pas encore dîné, monsieur. 
Et non, madame. Pas encore. Shorn of my wickedness, I promise you I am. I'm free again. I can love you again. I can work again. Oh, Bogey, oh, Bogey, be glad. Such a good wig has come back to you. Oh. <laughs> Alice, my love, we will never separate again, will we? Never. Ever. <laughs> Bogey, I feel so glad, so healthy. My arthritis is quite well. <laughs> and you found such a nice house. Oh, come have a look. Darling, you, you have forgiven my brother, haven't you, for lending me the money that took me away? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so good, so good to me. Oh. You've got your speckled trousers. <laughs> he wants to come and stay, can he, chummy? Oh. For a week before he goes to the front. Of course. Of course. Wig. Oh, my wig. Wig, look at your desk. Oh, you <laughs> are. <laughs> like ho. Tina Cory Road. <laughs> Not so big. Not so many. Do you remember after a southerly buster, we used to go out with clothes baskets um, a bit Mary Stoop, they went on falling on our backs, on our heads. Yeah, I've never seen pairs like them since. Bright canary yellow. And black pips, like jet. Yeah. First we pull out the stem. I used to suck the end, it was pink. And then soft. we ate them from the top down. Always, never the other way. No. <laughs> ah, delicious. Yeah. Do you remember the pink garden seat by the violet bed? Where's it now? It wobbled a bit, and there were normally the marks of a snail on it. Do you think we'll be allowed to sit in it in heaven? Of course. That's where it is. Isn't it extraordinary how deep our happiness was? How positive, deep, shining, warm. Mm. We used to look at each other and smile, sharing a secret. <laughs> what was it? I think it was the family feeling. We were almost like one child. It's getting chilly. <sighs> we'll go back there one day. And find everything. Everything. You cold? Dreadfully. Goodbye, darling. Why'd you say that? Why? Because... I'll always be a stranger here. Not to me, darling. Not to me. Oh, oh my son! Exhausted. We'll have to play for two, Jack. Right, change us. Okay. Oh, no, well, we, we need a brother, Jack. Yes, it did. <laughs> oh. Jack, can I read your credo for signature? Of course. Of course. <laughs> oh, I'm no good. This is an attempt to define my personal philosophy in relation to the new revolutionary magazine that DHL and I have agreed to edit together. Da -da 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 -da. The war has assailed me in my consciousness. Men I know of my own age have met their death. 
Every time the news of such a death has come to me, I've been plunged for hours, even for days, in a cold despondency of horror. Miss K.M. Beauchamp. Beauchamp, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Accident. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Not a lake. It looks like a lake. That's for the ice pudding. <gasps> oh. <gasps> Let me touch no. it. No. You all want to touch everything. Please, just my finger on the roof. No. <laughs> Certainly not. People don't eat houses. He means well. Not now, darling. Off you go, both of you. And be sure to play tidy games till you're called. If we undo this scene, Nurse, it should but be all must... right. And off you go. Nurse is helping me now. Nurse will fetch you down when it's time to be seen. Only a minute, mind. Then up to bed. 
They mustn't eat the house. Off you go. You aren't silly. I'm not. I mean it. A little recital in the drawing room and then the serious business with Grub. Not in the door. They're clapping. Don't nod your head. I know, I never nod my head. You do? You were fast asleep. I wasn't. And a bit of the roof for Mary. You should have let Dixon serve it, darling. No, this is special for the Children. Well, have them down. 
Give him a bone. No, certainly not. Oh, do, Daddy. Do have us down. I'm hanged if I won't. I won't be bullied, Kitty. <laughs> You're a perfect ton of bricks. Come on. Come and have some pickings. Mother! Your dress is right off one side. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's delicious. Oh, silly boy. I'm not! Oh, not you, darling. Father. But he's old. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> moment. Off you go. As it was, I'll write about our own, own country. Then I shall be able to be with you in all the remembered places. Oh, my love, oh, my brother, I shall make our undiscovered country leap into the eyes of the old world. But all must be told with a mystery, a radiance, an afterglow, because you, you, my little son of it are set. <laughs> 